So uh, who'd have thought? We, we, we're now going into um, State of Emergency Part 2, the State of Emergency Strikes Back, um, the second episode. The original State of Emergency was supposed to go until this week, but that obviously, uh, think given that things have only gotten worse and have not gotten better, basically had no impact. Um, all the things that went wrong with the first state of emergency, they, they, they just wanted it to basically go over Golden Week with the hope that if people just hung, hungered down for two weeks, that somehow that could you know, reduce the curve again. The problem being that there was no clear message to not go and plan trips for Golden Week. The, the Prime Minister made a statement on the first day or the day before Golden Week saying, hey, we'd like everyone not to travel for Golden Week and to plan to stay home. But they didn't say that until the day before Golden Week when everyone had already booked all their travel, which they had booked when there was no state of emergency, but it was getting worse, but the government wasn't doing anything about it. So, you know, all of the um, voluntarily please close your... Um, uh, restaurants early and bars early that happened again although again the idea that people don't get coronavirus drinking or eating at restaurants during the day is kind of silly they also did this kind of prohibitionist um, with the data showing that people are getting coronavirus often in clusters associated with alcohol parties which can be indoors out or outdoors um, they had this idea that uh, yeah they're going to focus on alcohol for example uh, requiring restaurants to close early if they serve alcohol or you know you can stay open longer if you don't serve alcohol they focused on people who were after the sh restaurants were closing you had students who would just go to a convenience store and buy alcohol and drink on street corners and focusing on that but even that it was more almost focusing on it as a social ill than a, than a public health issue um, and it, it, again it had a little bit of um uh, reefer madness kind of uh, outrage about it that it was just something that the media was going to focus on as a sort of a public ill with the, the governor saying yes we don't want young people on street corners drinking uh, alcohol which is relatively common in, in, in Japan and always has been but painting that as a coronavirus thing they were focusing on that and not doing anything else one of the measures that they did was this where the government thought rather than tell businesses to, um, again, increase remote working and shut down and allow people to take time off, you know, take coronavirus vacations, they didn't want to pay for any of that. They didn't want to uh, force companies like they did at the start of the pandemic to, um, to cease operations. And they certainly didn't have the money left over to pay for it. So rather than that, they thought that'd be very clever. And they would only tell the train companies to reduce the number of trains, thinking that if there are fewer trains, well, then people will, not so many people will go to work. Of course, the problem is, is that if companies are not letting people take time off, uh, because those companies are not getting compensated, of course, what happens is when you have fewer trains, is that those trains are far more packed and crowded and nightmarish than they normally are, and far more dangerous from a coronavirus perspective. So... If there, you know, again, uh, there there are no clearly identified cases of people catching corona, known to have caught coronavirus from trains. But of course, if you've ever been on a crowded Tokyo train, you know it's totally possible that if you're pressed up against someone for, you know, 30 or 40 minutes on a train who's coughing or sick, and unfortunately that happens, um, it's almost unthinkable that it hasn't happened. And, and basically the, the, the coronavirus measures in Tokyo clearly were making that worse uh, for what they were doing. They were either ineffectual or actually like having a negative effect like this. So yeah, that's an idea that the, the government finally realized was, was not working. And the one good thing that they have done on the, the new extended state of emergency to go to May 31 at the moment, to go to the end of the month, is that they are actually... Um, the government, to be clear, uh, based on the constitution, the central government does not have uh, lockdown powers. They don't have powers to force people to, to stay at home or to allow police to detain and question people for being you know, outside, outside of curfew or to call a curfew. And this is a legacy of the occupation of Japan after the war. During the war, of course, Japan had its own version of the Gestapo, the Kempeitai. And the government, the central government had extreme powers over society. And, you know, it was part of the um, liberal order that was set up in Japan after the war to make sure that Japan could never become a fascist police state again. That basically all powers of the central government to be able to do anything like have a lockdown were taken away. Um, it's ironic that the government's arguing that now they want those powers back to deal with, you know, and they're using the coronavirus um, and the lack of ability to have lockdowns as a justification to amend the, the constitution. Um, but you know um because so partly it feels a little bit like they probably could do more but they're not doing it on purpose because they want to make an excuse to amend the constitution to give themselves more police powers um, however that said um they are in the, the extended um coronavirus um state of emergency um 
while they are not forcing companies to uh, reduce hours or to telework, they are using naming and shaming. They are going to start requesting companies submit details of what percentage and how much they're making their employees telework because surveys are showing that although companies tried teleworking or remote working uh, during the first and second lockdowns, the first, second and first dates of emergency, this time they're doing it less. A lot of companies have found that they don't like it. They think that their employees are slacking off and hiding and harder to supervise and they don't like the IT and the phone connections and they don't have the infrastructure for it. So a lot of companies are not doing it this time. And again, it's also contributing to the fact that the lockdown seem to be less effective this time, as well as all the other factors, like the fact that there are the um, the UK strains. And it seems now we have Indian strain coming into Japan as well. But right now in Tokyo, it's like 60% of the cases are the UK strain, which is more virulent than the, the previous strain. So on top of the fact that the strains are more... Um, harmful, they're more contagious, and they spread more easily. Um, the government's also been doing less, and the result is that it's had no effect. Um, so yeah, they are tightening the measures, and the one measure I commend is the increasing of the, um, at least the reporting obligation to explain yourself as to why your company if it hasn't done more teleworking if it's not. Um, and this is a good push for IT upgrades, but this whole idea of reducing the number of trains was just a disaster that backfired. Um, I'm really glad I didn't have to commute by train, but everyone I could see talking about it um, was talking about how the trains are just miserable. So, uh, yes. Uh, into the comments. Uh, Aaron, yes, indeed. Everybody, please don't forget to like it. It really does help, uh, and I appreciate uh, if, if you do that. And, of course, if you don't subscribe, please subscribe. Again, all of that helps the channel, but yes.